perfect Nothing to rearrange Sometimes you just Get a feeling like you need Some kind of change no matter And I'm your host, Will Nye the History Guy Today kids, we have a very special guest joining us Please welcome, Susie! <laughs> Everybody, I'm Susie. Haha, <laughs> yes, you are. Now, today, Susie, we are going to be learning about the Worcester v. Georgia court case. Ever heard of it? <laughs> well, you're in for quite a ride. For the sake of time, let's start in 1763. British America just finished fighting a war against the French and Indians, in which the French gave away all their land east of the Mississippi to British America. This was terrible news for the Indians, as the French were their only friend and protectors. <gasps> That's right, folks. Unfortunately, it gets worse. For years after, the Indians will be subject to violence and be forced to move far away from their lands. But why, Will Nye? Great question, Susie. Well, when the British first arrived in North America, they settled the eastern part of what would be the U.S. Keep in mind, the U.S. did not become the U.S. until 1776. Due to population pressure from increased birth rates, decreased mortality rates, and increased migration, the people in the East kept moving West, but the West was the Indians' home. No matter how much the Indians cried, people kept taking their lands and moving West. Wow, Mr. Nye, that's very mean. Yes, it was, Susie. But on March 3, 1832, a hero entered the scene. Wow, a real-life hero! Yes, two actually, Samuel A. Worcester and John Marshall. Samuel A. Worcester was a Christian missionary that lived on Cherokee lands in the state of Georgia. But Georgia did not want people teaching Cherokees about American culture and educating them. So they tried to impose a law that prohibited Georgians from settling on Cherokee lands unless they had permission from the governor of Georgia and swore an oath. But Mr. Nye, the Cherokees weren't part of the U.S. That's right, Susie. But Georgia made the law anyway, which meant trouble for Worcester because he did not have permission from the governor of Georgia to live on Cherokee lands. But Worcester was confused because the federal government ordered him to serve as a missionary on Cherokee lands. And now Georgia is telling him he can't do that. This was an issue for John Marshall of the Supreme Court to solve. On March 3rd, 1832, two, the Worcester v. Georgia court case happened. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are here today on behalf of Georgia, the defendant, and Worcester, the plaintiff. Arguments, please. Marshall, sir, Georgia had no right to extend its laws to the Cherokee Nation. They are independent and self-governing. The Constitution specifically states that the U.S. Congress is responsible to regulate commerce with Native Americans, making the act I was found guilty under unconstitutional. Also, many treaties between the U.S. and Cherokees already recognize the sovereignty of the Cherokees, which would make Georgia's law interfere with contracts, something that is prohibited by the Constitution. Reminder, Mr. Marshall, that in 1802, an act of Congress was made that regulated trade and relations between Indians already. Georgia's law is just unfit, unfair, and unconstitutional. Worcester is unloyal to the U.S. and a traitor. He was helping these savages that are preventing us from our homes and expanding our beloved nation. Are you really going to listen to this traitor? Enough, enough! I hereby rule that the Indian nations had always been considered as distinct, independent political communities, retaining their original na natural rights as the undisputed possessors of the soil. What does that mean, Mr. Nye? What Mr. Marshall meant is that since the Cherokees are their own in independent nation, Georgia cannot impose any laws on them, so the law they made is unconstitutional. Hooray, Mr. Marshall! Hooray is right, Susie. The ruling of the court case gave the Native Americans rights under the U.S. government and recognized their independence, and it empowered the federal government over the state government. The Supreme Court became what it's like today, thanks to John Marshall. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. That's all for today, kids. Thanks for watching. Dude! Mom, get that tea! You need to know that I love you. <laughs> <laughs>